So, you know, we're a little different from uh, most other uh, households. Usually, after um, St. Patrick's Day, the corned beef is all gone and there's a big tub of vegetables in the back of the refrigerator. Yeah. Not but, here. No, we have the opposite. We have no vegetables and tons of corned beef. I know. So. Yeah, so what do you do with a lot of corned beef? Reuben. Well, it, a stylized Reuben, kind of. A mm -hmm. corned beef Reuben. So one thing that we're going to do is, it, a lot of people have this misconception of when they make a, a sandwich like this that they have to put the ingredients on and then fry the bread. Like, one thing, but you don't have to. Essentially what you can do is you make a grilled cheese like this, mm -hmm. and you put it in your skillet. And over here, so we're just going to toast that up, fry it up. And over on this side, I'm going to get some uh, corned beef going. And some sauerkraut. Now you're going to see these is really, really fast. I tell her to do everything. That's how I cook. It's super fast. Fortunately, this um, corned beef has a lot of fat in it. Yeah. I'm still going to put some cheese in it um, just to kind of get it, you know, together. Um, I do like to fry the sauerkraut. Um, well, first off, nobody wants cold sauerkraut in my warm sandwich, you know? So you just heat it up, not, you know, but... And because the corned beef came out like this, um, we don't have to worry about it taking too long. Mm. So you can kind of cook it at a higher heat. Because um, essentially, you're just pretty much just warming it up. Because it's already cooked and everything. So oh, yeah. you're going to see this is going to come out probably within five minutes of the sandwich done. Mm. But as well, the man behind the camera will tell you, that's how I do everything. I cook fast. <laughs> thank you for doing this. Not a problem. All right. And over here, um, we're doing it with uh, provolone cheese today instead of Swiss cheese. I uh, have an aversion to Swiss cheese. The aversion is, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, whatever floats your boat. And uh, you'll see, the, the Swiss, when I go to break open the, the grilled cheese, you'll see that it's a very, um, it's nice and uh, straight. All right. It's starting to look shiny. Mm. It's starting to heat up. Mm. So from here, I'm just going to put on some cheese. Kind of mix it in a little bit. It'll help the beef hold together. Yes, exactly. So you're not going to be having shredded corned beef all over the place. So it's a nice and cheesy, cheesy um, sandwich for sure. Um, do you want your sauerkraut on top separate or you want to mix it in all together? Uh, maybe on top. Okay. Kind of like a steak and cheese style is what I'm doing here. Yeah. Yep. And everybody likes the steak and cheese. Think that's enough meat? You want some more meat in that? Well, it's also a smaller grilled cheese, kind of. Maybe a wee bit more. All right. Is that good? And there we go. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> and we're using the Stargazer. Which actually, I really do like this pan. It is very smooth. It is very smooth. Everything just slides across the surface. Yes. Yeah. One thing I have heard from some people uh, using the Stargazer what? is that uh, the seasoning, apparently, there is some trouble with getting the seasoning to stick to the pan. They've had to reseason it many times. Really? Well, that's what we're going to have to find out. Yeah. I did notice on the bottom of the skillet um, a little bit, it was a little bit darker, but I don't know. It doesn't seem to be as dark as the other skillets once you do, when you season them. All right. Okay, shut the heat off on that. That's how fast it is. All right, the real cheese. That's looking pretty nice and done. Now you're going to be surprised with this. And everyone is going to believe this. How easy it is to split open a sandwich to fill it. So you don't have to go frying your sandwich with the ingredients on. Because, you know, you go to flip a sandwich with all this corned beef and uh, sauerkraut on it, and you're going to find you're going to spill half of it. Okay. All we have to do is use a little Thousand Island. Yep, bam, done. And that, my friends, is sh short order cooking. <laughs> I learned that at a restaurant that I would say is um, is a good friend, <laughs> and they make wonderful ice cream. And they're actually located; they're uh, started here in Massachusetts. If you guys could put that together, 
I don't want to name drop or anything. <laughs> Go ahead. But they were very friendly. <laughs> <laughs> I no worked at. Yep, I learned how to make these sandwiches. Nice, fast, cork, uh, short order cooking at Fred Friendly's actually. There we go. And I actually, you know, as you noticed, we did one side with pumpernickel and one side with rye. Um, I actually said to the man behind the camera that one way to make these is with a uh, marbled rye. But right now, all the markets, bread aisle empty. <laughs> Gluten allergy, what? No. <laughs> but so instead of the marble rye, we got one side pumpernickel and one side um, is rye. Well, I kind of mashed up that bread a little bit. I don't think anybody's going to complain. Well, you know how nobody's going to complain? Watch. You know what mom uh -oh. always uses? Wait. Messed up bread what? Yeah. <laughs> so there we go. Look at that. Super healthy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready? Oh, take yeah. a bite of that. Oh, yeah. You take a bite. Yeah. i got to toast it a little bit more. It's hard mm. to tell a pumpernickel. Mmm. Mm -hmm. So good? Mm -hmm. Delicious? Oh, yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. So, how long did that take all together? This whole thing's only been six minutes. I have to edit Six minutes. It down. Six minutes and your sandwich is finished. Voila. There you go, guys. Thanks. Enjoy. For, thank you for watching. <laughs>